In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Kakimori Casebound Notebook. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a paper test, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the notebook coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So here we have the Kakimori Casebound Notebook. This notebook has a natural dyed linen cover. It is casebound and spinebound. It is Mitsubishi bank paper. There are 120 pages. It is acid-free paper and it's handmade in Tokyo. Now, this notebook comes only in A5 size. However, it comes in this portrait orientation, the normal orientation, and then they also do one that is a landscape orientation, so it would open this way, which is kind of an interesting choice. I don't see a lot of other companies doing that. It's also blank only. They do not do a lined version or a grid version or a dot version. It's blank only. They also only come in three colors. There's this blue, there's kind of like a, a burnt orange and a khaki. So interesting color palette, very nice looking, very natural looking colors. Now if I remove this little jacket thing, it's a blank cover. On the spine here we can see the Kakimori uh, logo and stamped. And it's interesting this notebook on like the spec sheet it says who manufactures everything that's in the notebook so the lining is from Senda Co Ltd I assume this is the what they mean by the lining this paint paste down the binding is from Okada binding and the foil stamping which should literally just be this silver foil stamp here is by Tanaka foil stamping interesting that they point that out and then of course the the main paper in here is Mitsubishi bank paper you have a silver bookmark and that's it there's no other features you just got the paste down and then you're going right into the paper now if you notice the paper has a line at the top and two dots my assumption is that you can put title or subject and then the date I, I'm guessing what that is there for I would have prefer not to have that. I mean I can make that myself and it does take up quite a bit of space here. Now I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here but there, the watermark on this paper is pretty strong and it's still hard to catch on camera but it says three diamonds which is basically the Mitsubishi logo. It's a neat watermark and it's one that you can kind of see when you're writing on it and it can maybe be more distracting than other watermarks. Now this only has 120 pages and as a result you only get five signatures so that's still pretty good. It's not the best but it, it's pretty good. It, it lays pretty flat. The binding is pretty flexible. It's a nicely made notebook. And the cover is a soft cover. It's got some structure to it, but it is flexible. Let's do a let's look, look at the paper test here. So starting with the, the pilot, pretty much no feathering. Actually, yeah, I'm going to say no feathering. The kind of fuzziness you see around the edges, that's really just the texture of the paper. It's not really feathering. And you can maybe see ever so slightly there's some kind of sheening and shading on the pilot. I didn't really use any sheening inks, but it, this paper does sheen. You can see the Mont Blanc 149 OBB looks pretty good. Uh, the Safari looks good, the Twisby Eco looks good. Actually everything here on the face looks really good. I don't see any problems uh, with feathering on the face. Now we go to the back. There's zero bleed through on the 
fountain pens. Nothing showed through. We get pretty faint spotting on the Sharpie Fine, some bleed through with the, the Copic, very, very few dots here on the Stettler permanent marker, and even fewer on the Pilot oil drawing pen. Everything else passed. This is really, really, really good performance. This is a paper that I have used for quite a long time. It's not one that I've seen in notebooks before. I have this Life writing paper, which is the same Mitsubishi bank paper. I bought multiple sets of this and the matching envelopes, and I, I really, really love this paper. So I was very happy to see it here in a notebook form. So paper performance is really, really good. I put this up there with, honestly, with Tomoe River. It is, it doesn't have as much of a coated feel, but it holds fountain pen ink really, really nicely. You do get ghosting. There's less ghosting than you get with Tomoe River. This is really, really good paper. So what are my pros and cons for the Kakimori case-bound notebook? The biggest pro for me is definitely that Mitsubishi bank paper. Mitsubishi bank paper had been a favorite of mine for quite a while, but I had not found it in notebook format. So when I saw this, I bought it instantly. The build quality of this notebook is really, really nice. I like this natural linen cover. It feels really good. It feels very high quality. I also like that this notebook is only 120 pages. It's easier to fill up and then I can move on to the next notebook, but it doesn't get so small that it's not useful. So I, I do really like that 120 pages. Now in terms of cons, I don't necessarily like this blank layout with like the place the, the top for a title or date or something. Um, I would have preferred lined. I always prefer a ruled notebook, but it's not not a huge deal. It's expensive. I think I paid $30 for this. That's really it. Do you guys have this notebook? Do you like this notebook? Let me know in the comment section below, and if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.